So, a few months ago, I did a denim clear out video. The reason I did that video is that the missus is moving in next month and I had to clear some space. Yeah, that worked out really well. I got rid of a lot of things. Then I got a couple of sponsored videos and basically recharged the entire collection. But anyway, I still think it's less than it was. Right, during that video, I think you could see a little bit of the boot collection and I had a few guys asking in the comments or sending me DMs just saying, hey, we'd like to see the boots as well. So I thought that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go through all of the pairs and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them, a little bit of the history, about the personal history. And I'm also gonna sort out which ones I'm gonna keep and which ones I'm going to pass on to somebody who's, who's gonna get the proper amount of wear out of them. Okay, I'm gonna to start top down like a narc, like a narc with bad knees. Uh, give me a second. There we go, that's a bit more civilized. Right, starting top down, starting here. These are in absolutely no particular order. I should have ordered them a little bit more. Anyway, right. Gonna start with these. Um, these are a pair of Our Legacy Cuban boots. These are already up and grilled, actually. I, these are beautiful boots, they're amazing boots, like really, they are, but they're not really me. They were never really me. I couldn't figure a, a way to wear them. These belong to somebody much, much cooler than me. So yeah, they're, they're moving on already. Uh, okay, so move on pile down there. Then we have, a pair of very old Birkenstocks, which I bought for my father when he came to visit. So he had some house shoes and yeah, Yelk has taken them over. Uh, so they stay. And then we also have our painting shoes as well. So they stay too. Then, that works. Uh, then we have a pair of, this is hard. How did the people in the, how do the people on the shopping networks do it? They always make it look so, so easy. Ah, tripod. It's a pair of Grants and Chelsea boots. And um, I guess this shelf belongs to the shelf that I don't really use very much, which is strange because it's the top ones. And um, this is also a really, really beautiful pair of boots. And I, I really like them, but I honestly, I hardly ever wear them. I mean, really they're a stunning pair of boots. They've got the leather sole. They've got uh, this beautiful, like shiny leather, really, really top quality. Uh, the elastics, really, really good quality as well. But honestly, I think I've had these for maybe two or three years and I've worn them just enough to break them in a tiny bit. Like we're talking like less than half a dozen times. So uh, I think these go. Right, just a quick glance down the shelf and I think I'm gonna be keeping all of these, but we'll go through them anyway. Uh, here we've got a pair of Viberg hiker boots. Um, I, I got these as an absolute bargain of the, the German version of eBay. These were, I don't know if they're exclusive to end clothing, but certainly that's the only place I've ever seen them sold with this uh, black rough out upper and the black sole. So I think the guy got them on a bit of a whim and they definitely did not match his style. And so he was just, trying to get rid of them, trying to recover some of the 800 euros that he paid for them. And so I think I picked them up for like 300. They are an incredible, okay, one at a time. They are an incredible pair of boots, like seriously. They are absolutely beautiful. And they're also the, the hardest time I've had breaking in a pair of boots since my very first pair of Red Wings. Uh, these boots broke me, you know, the other way around. And I don't even think they're broken in yet. I mean, I got them at the end of, of the winter this year, so I didn't really put too much wear into them, but they're just such a stunning pair of boots. Right, so anyway, those go back on the shelf because I, I want to keep them. Uh, and then another pair of Vibergs. Um, these, one at a time, when will I learn? Uh, this is a pair of the Viberg Ropers. I don't really know where well, I know where I got them, but I don't know really know how they made their way over here. 
I think they're the, the version that 316 did, because I've only ever seen this rough out upper with the sort of tan sole with 316. Anyway, I picked these up uh, second hand, but really not second hand. I think that the, the previous owner, again, he bought them on a bit of a whim, decided that they weren't really his style, they were a bit too tough to break in, and he had dropped them off to stuff fine goods down in Dusseldorf. Uh, shout out to them. He dropped them off to stuff fine goods to sort of sell second hand, and then I picked them up for, again, an absolute bargain. So th these, these are the best iteration of roper boots that I've, that I've ever seen, that I've ever owned, that, that I know of. They're just, they're so unbelievably easy and comfy and they go very, very well with my style. The, the way that the, the, when you get them, the toe box here is quite bulbous. But with, with time and wear and as you breathe them in, it really flattens out nice, but sort of maintains that structure. It's just, they're, they're such a beautiful pair of boots. I mean, I was never that sure about Vibrox before because I was like, okay, they're, they're expensive. Can, the, can that price really be justified? Yes, it can. They're, they're, they're definitely not for everybody. And there are certainly alternatives out there that are much more affordable, much more accessible. But they are just an incredible pair of boots, or the shoes are as well incredible. Yeah, so again, those, those stay. Right, okay. These Red Wings 877s, the Iris Setter. This was the very, very first pair of boot, good boots I ever got. And these have got a lot of personal history in them. I, I hummed and had about getting these boots for, I think, over a year. I was just getting into the whole salvage denim thing, but I wasn't quite used to spending proper money, justifiable money, but proper money on, on anything. And yeah, really, we're, we're talking about a lot of deliberation, a lot of discussions with friends about whether it's justifiable to do that. Then I went along to the store, finally pulled the trigger on them. And God, like, I would have given up on these, to be honest, if I hadn't been bullheaded. And then I, these are the only pair of boots that I took to my travels in Colombia. And that's the only reason I managed to get through them because I had to, I didn't have any alternative. I it was just, I was not used to, to breaking in a pair of boots before then. And yeah, it was it was tough going. There was a lot of uh, a lot of blisters, a little bit of bleeding as well. But I was rewarded with an absolutely incredible pair of boots that I was. These were my go-to for for literally four or five years. It was four or five years before I got another pair of which ones did I get? I think I got a pair of Red Wing Engineers, which I've, I've sold on since then because I. I wasn't too vibing with the engineer thing. We're gonna talk about that later. Anyway, so yeah, these I've seen many, many miles. They've seen three or four resoles and they're probably due for a resole now. Uh, these are reaching the end of their life, just like, like here where the toes bend, uh, where the foot bends. Um, the leather's quite cracked, I think. Is that the worst culprit? Nah, here, the, there's some really deep cracks on the left one. These get broken out for special occasions when I want to go to something particular heritage and I want to flex a little bit. But yeah, they don't see too much wear these days. Um, but, okay, I can't get rid of them for sentimental reasons, which is not a good reason to keep something. But also, these are so broken into my feet that I wouldn't feel right about selling them off to somebody else because they would just never be comfortable with them. All uh, right, so yeah, Red Wing Iris Setter 877s. Um, and the, the leather that was before the Oro Legacy leather came in, so also with that a little bit, not unique, there's tens of thousands of boots like that as well, but yeah, I can't get those exact ones again, and I really like that leather. Uh, right, moving on. Okay, a little bit different to the, the rugged Hunter Iris Setter, right? Uh, this is a pair of Trickers, they're Chelsea boots. I th is it the Henry? Is it the Hank? Can't remember the name. Yes, these look a bit much, a bit ostentatious, a bit, a bit flamboyant. But honestly, like seriously, they really, 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 really work with a pair of brand new raw salvage denim jeans. This, this sort of, this 
burgundy color with the, the pink pull-on straps. I saw them, I'm like, oh, surely that's not going to, and then I was like, okay, just try them on. I'll try to tell you why I was, why I was so gravitating towards them in a second. It's like, okay, just try them on, see what you think. Because I, I know this model of boot and I always wanted a pair, but I, I didn't find, find the exact one I wanted. I never thought it was going to be this one, certainly. But yeah, these, these work, they really, really work. You'd be surprised, they're, they look a bit out of context with all of these boots, but they look good. They're, they're perfect for when you're wanting to peacock when you're down in, in Florence for pity. Yeah, so these, these definitely don't go, these, these stay. One thing about trickers that we're gonna talk about a little bit later on as well. Trickers, guys, I, I love you, like really, you're, you're my go-to boot these days, but can you please be a little bit more consistent about your sizes? Like, I'm a 43 on the, on the nail, like on the nose, consistently throughout every other boot. These ones are, I think, a seven and a half. And my other ones, I think these are a nine. The, the other ones, the commandos down here, they are, they are 43, they are a nine. Um, and, okay, gonna get into that later. Um, moving on, so those stay. Yeah, my... Red Wing Pecos. Regulars to the channel will have seen these before. These are the ones that I bought second hand as uh, kind of an experiment. The whole thing behind that was that I wanted to wear my, my custom insoles with a pair of boots, so I need a little bit more space. Normally, I wouldn't suggest, although I've been told off by a lot of guys, or I've been suggested this isn't the case by a lot of guys off the base of the video, that you can wear in a second hand pair of Red Wings to your foot. I'm not too sure about that. I wouldn't be able to wear these A because of the size and B because the other guy's foot was very different to me. I wouldn't be able to wear these without the, the insole inside them. But still, I, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with this pair of boots which have got a pair of insoles from my trainers. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with this pair of boots. They're absolutely fantastic and they stay. Okay, almost finished this shelf. Uh, this is another pair of trickers. Um, what size do these say? Eight and a half. Yeah. Right, this is a pair of trickers. Uh, again, I can't remember the name of them, but I think they're intended for... No, the ones, the ones that are intended for motorcycling have got like a, an extra piece of leather here for the gear shift. Um, I don't know, whatever. They've got this... Um, flap that goes up and over the top of the laces here which stops them flapping around. Absolutely beautiful stunning pair of boots and I, I really really love them but they're also the most impractical boots you could possibly imagine because you've got to faff around with like you've got to tie up the laces then you've got to re-thread the laces up here then you've got to tuck the laces back then you've got two buckles to undo. They look absolutely fantastic when they're done up but if you're just going to run out to the shops they're not that great. Uh, but I still love them and they're quite rare as well. I don't see them very often. So yeah, definitely going to keep these. That's that shelf finished now. So that went faster than I thought. Mind you. Okay, no, it didn't go faster than I thought. I've been talking for 10 minutes. Okay, next shelf. And we're going to start off with these Red Wing Loggers, which are a bit dusty. Uh, when did I... So I got these as a replacement for these back in 2016 when I was in Portland, Oregon. I went to the, the Red Wing shoe store in Portland, Oregon. And that's the first time I realized that Red Wing shoes in Europe is something very, very different to Red Wing shoes in the US. I went to the Red Wing shoes in the US and I was confronted by a bunch of quite techy hunting boots with the Red Wing Heritage line kind of being an afterthought at the back of the shop. But yeah, the, they didn't have any 877s, didn't have any 875s. They maybe had like an Iron Ranger. And then they had these, they had the, the Red Wing Logger. Uh, they had them in this black, which I hadn't seen before. And I'd seen a, a video, like a promo video that Red Wing did where the, the, they went and interviewed Red Wing wearers, Red Wing fans, and one was a, a chef, I think, of Japanese descent that was working in Italy somewhere, and his boot of choice for the kitchen was a pair of Red Wing loggers. He made them look absolutely sick, and I wanted a pair. But yeah, that was, these are kind of like the, 
kind of like the Cuban boots. I, I like the idea. I like seeing somebody wearing them, wanted a little bit of that, but couldn't really, couldn't really marry that up with my own personal style. So these really haven't been worn that much. And I mean, that's well, 2016, that's five years ago. So yeah, these are, these are gonna get moved on. Okay, my whites, uh, my whites, is it semi-dress? I think so, yeah. This is the first and only pair of boots that I've ever actually had custom made for me. I, I took advantage when whites was showing with iron hearts way, way back when Bread and Butter, that was like a massive uh, European trade show, when Bread and Butter was still in business in Berlin, yeah, Whites was showing with Ironheart, they are measuring up people's feet, ordering custom boots, and so I got carried away and ordered myself a pair of these. I got stung really hard, like really, really hard with the import. I won't tell you, I won't tell you how much I ended up having to pay, but these were expensive boots anyway. I got them in in a T-core horse hide, uh, which put on some, some some money as well. And then either way, there's a lesson learned about the German customs office, I'll tell you that. But I got an absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful pair of boots. Most of the whites have got quite a, a rounded toe box, which, yeah, as I said before with the Vibers, I don't really dig that. So I did for the sort of unstructured toe box here, which works beautifully with this like quite soft, quite supple, but still. See, the thing with horse hide I found is that it becomes soft and supple, but it doesn't stretch the way that the steer hide or, or cow hide does. So it's okay to have an unstructured toe box with, with, with horse hide leather, whereas it's, it tends to get a bit a bit floppy, a little bit sort of your foot washes around a little bit when you've got cow hide with an unstructured toe box. Again, I wouldn't, would not move these on um, and they're built to my foot, so I couldn't really move these on, so they definitely stay. Okay, a pair of Red Wing, another pair of Red Wing Pecos. Different model this time though, different leather, different sole. So I think I got these because I had my eye on, on a pair of the Vibergs and couldn't afford them. So these came up at Meadows and I was like, yeah, okay, I can, I can stretch to that and there'll be a good alternative. These are a stunning pair of boots and they still got quite a lot of wear and um, maybe not as much as the Vibergs, but they're, as you can see, like, the left one. These are, are a little bit more refined. They're not quite as, as solid, not quite as bulky as the Vibergs. Uh, so yeah, they're just, they've got different uses. I'm definitely gonna keep these because they don't make these anymore and uh, they're quite, there's a few out there that if you want a pair, but they're quite hard to get. And I, I just really, really like the boots. I think, I think they work very, very well in a lot of situations. They're incredibly comfortable. And again, they're, they're broken into my foot since I got them new. So yes, those do I? Yes, those stay. Another pair of whites. These are gonna go. These are gonna go, they should have gone already. I, I bought these uh, from a guy in the Netherlands and um, when you buy something online and secondhand, which these aren't secondhand, they're brand new. When you do that, there's always a risk that they're not going to fit. Uh, I measured up, I did my due diligence, due, bleh, due diligence as much as I could. But yeah, they are just a touch too tight for me. They probably would stretch out as I wore them in, but also can't really say that I was making this style work for me. And I think that I'd be much better to, to pass this on to somebody who's, who's really gonna appreciate them and can wear them in from new. So oh, they are, the really, whites do such a good job. They make such beautiful boots. But yeah, I am gonna, I'm gonna let these ones go. Right, okay, another piece, okay, out of all of these boots, these have to be my favorites. They're maybe not the ones that I, I wear the most often, but these are certainly my favorites because there's, there's a good story behind them. And that's the thing with, with all, of this, all of this stuff that I think the guys gravitate to. If there's a story behind them, we just make much more of a connection to that piece. So it's, 
it's kind of important to build a little bit of a narrative around about whatever piece of clothing that, that you've got in your in your wardrobe. I think that's why why salvage denim and why raw denim why so many people they, they go to it and then they never get away from it. It's just like part of them then because you build up narrative within that garment. These have got a personal narrative to them. Specifically, these are the Eat Dust collaboration Pecos with Red Wing. And they, they're, they're, quite, they're quite special, right? They're quite, quite particular. I mean, like the, the higher Pecos, so you can see here. I know what we're gonna take. Yeah, these are a couple of inches higher than these ones. They've got much more of a pointed toe as well. And they are, they're definitely much more towards sort of the cowboy boots. These are a roper, I would say, and these are sort of Red Wing's pared down version of a cowboy boot, which is perfect for dust the brand. Okay, so, I mean, I, I'd seen these, I didn't really ever intend on pulling the trigger, but then my dad was coming over to, to visit work Berlin one, one year. And I mean, I've been working in the denim industry, I've been working with, in menswear for, for a few years and I'd had an interest for a few years. I, this is something he was never really into. He was at a very utilitarian point of view when it came to clothing. And I wanted to, to give him a little bit of a, an insight and a little bit of a taster of this, this world. So I, I took him along to, to the Red Wing shoe store here in Berlin uh, to get him a pair, a pair of boots. Like, properly take him through the whole process of having a look, seeing which ones he likes, then getting his feet measured up, getting advice from the, the guys, or actually it was a girl, um, getting advice from the staff at the Red Wing shoe store and really getting the perfect pair of boots because I don't think that was something he, he ever experienced before. It's, it's not something you really find too common these days. And I think it's something special. Again, it's like it, it's building up even from the very even from the, the moment of buying or even like before buying, it's like you're building up a relationship with not only that, that garment or that pair of boots, but also the, the place that you bought them and the people there as well. And that sense of community is, is incredibly important. Anyway, just to say I wanted him to be a little bit of a part of that. He picked out a pair of Red Wing blacksmiths and like really beautiful pair of boots and it was he was absolutely delighted with them. Just for fun, so yeah, it, was a, it was a friend that was helping us out there and I was like, I just asked her like, hey, could you maybe like just pull the, the Red Wing Pecos there off the shelf? I'd, I'd like to, I sorry, the Eat Dust Pecos, I'd like to try those. She's like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Last 43, I think, and certainly in the city, maybe like last 43 in, in Europe. As soon as I tried them on, I was just like, ah, kind of, I kind of have to. And so, yeah, we walked out of the store with a pair of boots for my dad, that was the intention, and a pair of boots for me. And so these are a very, very special pair of boots for me because I associate them with that one time that I went shopping for boots with my dad. So, yeah, I am I love these things. Um, I don't wear them as much as I should, and I, I really should, I should wear them a little bit more, actually. So they stay. Okay, here we have a pair of Lone Wolf Engineer boots. This is a stunning, stunning, stunning pair of boots. It really is. I bought these to replace my Red Wing, my Red Wing Engineers, whatever, whatever they're called. I'm not really too in, I'm never doing anything that really requires a steel toe cap. The Red Wing Engineers I had, they were proper like engineer work boots that are steel toe. I sold those on, I put the money that I got from that towards these that don't have a steel toe. Yeah, again, it's the same with, with the Packers, it's the same with, with the Loggers, and it's the same with, with the Cuban boots and also the Chelsea's there. They don't really fit into my style and so I don't really, I don't reach them very often. And so they, they end up just sitting in the shelf, which is really a shame for a beautiful pair of boots like these. I mean, these are, these are really stunning. They're Lone Wolf are, who are they owned by? Is it Sugarcane? Anyway, they're, they're Japanese boot brands that I think's owned or run by, a, they're the boot part of one of the, the bigger Japanese denim guys. They are T-Core Horsehide. They've got a cat's paw outer sole stacked leather heel. Um, stunning, stunning and very, very comfortable as well. Like super, super comfortable. These, these broke in very, very fast and there was actually no break-in period with these. 
Again, that's cause of the, the horse hide. It's, it flexes, but it doesn't stretch. Hmm. Do I move these on? Okay, they're gonna go into the maybe pile. Maybe pile's there. And that's that shelf done. Right. Okay, I can't actually get the camera tripod any lower and my back is starting to hurt. Um, but we're gonna continue. You guys don't mind if I just keep this camera angle, right? Hmm. What else? Okay, we have got a crummy pair of Nike trainers that I use just for running. Um, they stay just out of necessity. We have um, a pair of Nevestas. You guys absolutely know that I absolutely love Nevestas. They are my canvas kick of choice. These are three years old and they're only now starting to see a tiny little bit of wear. Can you tell me another canvas kick that's gonna last that well? Right, so the Nevestas stay, they stay down there. What's next? Pair of Alden Indie Boots. These, this is a little bit ridiculous this. So as I said, like my girl's moving in next month. So that means like a lot of clearing out, a lot of sorting out. So I sorted out the basement last month. Somehow, I don't know how, I managed to put these in a box. I managed to put them in the basement. I managed to forget about them for about two years. I found them the other day and I was like, oh, how can I forget that I've got a pair of Alden Indie boots? Is it the 403 or the 405? One of the two. Anyway, the whole story between um, Alden and Indiana Jones, I think Indiana Jones was meant to be wearing Red Wings, I think. And then Harrison Ford turned up to the set and he was like, listen, I've got really bad feet. I, I like my, my, my Alden 405s. He was a, he worked as a roofer before, or a carpenter. And he worked as a carpenter and his work boot of choice was a pair of, of Aldens. They, they suited his feet. Uh, so yeah, these, they were just used as Indiana Jones's boots. They've become famous because of that. But these are such a good pair of boots. I didn't like, when I was looking at them, I didn't really rate them too much. I was like, yeah, they're, they're nice boots, but um, I don't quite get it. You don't quite get it until you put them on and they just, they're just such a nice, nice pair of boots. So yeah, they, they stay. And I need to dust much, much more. And blah, blah, blah. Um, Okay, a pair of, these are quite special. These are a pair of Mon Italy, not Mon Italy, Yucatan. Mon Italy is the clothing brand of Yuki. This is um, the, the shoe brand, Yucatan of Yuki. Right, these are a pair of pull-on moccasins hand sewn um, with a uh, Harwin pull-up leather. They, these, are, these are a stunning pair of boots, they're just, they're absolutely lovely. What's strange with these is that they don't seem to ever break in. No, they, they, they do break in. They were, they're comfy as soon as I put, pulled them on. And, but they don't show very much signs of wear despite me having them for like two years now. So many people discourage me from getting these boots and they're all eating their words now because these are absolutely gorgeous and everybody likes them now. So yeah, they, they stay. They're, they're a gorgeous pair of boots, beautiful leather, lovely design on Vibram crepe sole. Lovely boots. And uh, now we're coming to another pair of trickers. This has to be the pair of boots that I think I reach for the most. Aside from the, the whole sizing problem um, or sizing issue with trickers, they are they're the pair of boots that seem to fit my feet and fit my style at the moment the most. So yeah, these get the most wear. These were a pair of, I'm not even going to Try to pretend that I remember the name. These are a pair of boots that Bergen Shield did with with trickers way back. Bergen Shields are like a menswear store in, in Berlin. Really amazing selection of denim. Definitely need to check them out. Yeah, so they did a collaboration pair with trickers like a long time ago, I think like back 2008, 2009 when the store first opened. And I, I found these on, on eBay. The guy had, the guy was a, a club kid and or not a club kid he was a club man so you don't really associate clubbers with a pair of trickers i think he bought them again on a whim and I'd, he'd never ever worn them they 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 came with the shoe bags they, they didn't come with did they come with the box i don't know yeah, they did come with the box the box is right there yeah uh, they were brand new he just never worn them and i picked them up for an absolute bargain and uh, these are are super super rare they've got like a, a rough out leather here then they've got like the smooth leather um, rough out leather at the front, they've got the broguing, then they've got smooth leather over the 
the rest of the boot apart from the back. That wasn't a good way to describe it, but either way, probably my most used pair of boots in this whole collection, at least at the minute. Um, okay, we're reaching the end. Thank goodness, there's only a few pairs left. Uh, this is a pair of thorough good roofing boots. I hardly ever wear these, really hardly ever wear them. They're a stunning pair of boots, they really are, and they're super comfy, super supportive. These are really a proper, proper pair of work boots. And they're, they're designed for tasks, they were designed for roofing, so they've got, they've got no grip on the sole, so you're not gonna catch anything, you're not gonna slip. I'm gonna keep these, and I will keep these, because these are an excellent pair of work boots, and I need a pair of work boots whenever I'm doing working, which doesn't happen very often, so that's why these aren't used very often. But yeah, I, I'm gonna keep hold of these, because they're just, they're a very practical pair of boots. Here, we have a pair of Clark's Desert Boots. These came in a natural veg tanned leather. Natural veg tanned leather is fantastic for things like, like wallets, for belts, for, for other leather accessories. I don't think it really works for shoes. These look, they, they came, when, they, when I first got them, they were completely white. I left them out in the sun for quite a long time to darken them down a little bit to get a bit of patina on them. I, I, I have used them a lot. These have these are like my, my summer leather shoes and they're incredibly good and incredibly comfy for that. I can wear them without any socks underneath, totally fine and they don't get stinky. But they look kind of nasty, they look kind of gross. I, I mean, I'm definitely gonna keep these. I, I wouldn't, I, I'd feel embarrassed to try and move something that's this worn on. And they've still got a lot of life left in them. Maybe I'll try and clean them up a little bit. Maybe try and like use some use some boot oil to darken them down a little bit so they don't like look quite so grubby. But like I'm sounding pretty negative about these. I, I if I was doing it over again, I definitely wouldn't go for natural veg tan leather for a pair of shoes. But these have served me incredibly well. One thing I will say, however, this whatever sole this is, whatever type of sole this is which I think comes on, on all the wallabies, and I think most of the desert boots as well. This, the, you could climb up walls with this in the dry. It's sticky, it's, it's like completely gummy and sticky and great. If there's even like, like a tiny little shimmer of rain, these turn any surface into an ice rink. Like I, I've gone down hard. I, you know that, that surface you get um, in train stations and things, like this, I don't know, hard polished concrete? That's the worst culprit for these. These just turn frictionless. You just, you get in there and you feel yourself starting to move. There's nothing you can do about it. So for that, it's completely, completely impractical. Uh, but yeah, these, these stay. Uh, let's go down here. That's all the boots on display on the shelf sorted out. So what have I got rid of? I, I am gonna get rid of the Lone Wolves. Um, as much as they're a fantastic pair of boots, as I said, I never really vibed with them. I think somebody else would really, really vibe with them, really enjoy wearing them. And so I'm going to let those go. So I've sorted out, so I've sorted out how many? One, two, three, four, five pairs. Not quite the clear out I wanted to, but um, still, it's not bad. Right, and the last pair I want to talk about, and this is coming back to this thing of trickers being very inconsistent with their um, their sizing. So, as I said, like all my other trickers are all different sizes, all of them. Like, I don't think there's, there's one size. There's maybe a variation of a half a size to a size. Uh, so I, I felt, I wouldn't say confident, but quietly confident when I bought another pair online. And I bought, so I guess, Anybody who's at all like into menswear at all, you're, you're probably noticing that the loafers are getting to be quite a thing these days. So I wanted a, a pair of loafers and I found the perfect pair of loafers on eBay going for a very, very good price in my size. Couldn't say no, really couldn't say no. I mean, look at these things. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're stunning. They, I don't think they've ever had anybody's foot in them. And then they've got a leather sole. And if you look at the leather sole, like I don't think you can tell instantly with a pair of boots or shoes with leather soles when they've even been tried on around about the house. You can see they're all scuffed up. These are flawless. They're absolutely beautiful. They're also, and okay, here, it, it says it then. It says like, 
size nine, fitting five. This is the box for the Bergen Shield ones. These ones here, which fit me like a glove. These really, they, they fit perfectly. It says size nine, fitting five. So you'd presume that there wouldn't be very much variation, but you presume wrong. Yeah, these are, I would say at least, at least one size too big for me. Okay, I know I've got bare feet, but you want to be wearing loafers with bare feet. And there is, I can fit my whole finger down the back of the, the shoe. So that, that really does not work in the slightest. And yeah, so these, I'm not even gonna put my foot down because I don't wanna scratch up the, the sole. Because <sighs> these are such a nice pair of shoes. Shit. I'm really, I'm really gutted these didn't work out. Um, yeah, but these are gonna have to be moved on, sadly. Right, so that is one, two, three, four, five. Six pair of shoes that I managed to clean out. It's not bad, it's really not bad. And all the rest of them that are left here, apart from the semi-retired Red Wings, I wear them pretty often, so it's justifiable that they stay, right? That was the, the whole boot collection. So I guess this was a, a pretty long one, so thank you if you're still around, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna get these polished up a little bit and then I'm gonna get them photographed and get them up on Grailed. I'm not using eBay anymore. I'm not, I, I don't like eBay anymore. It's not a nice place. Anyway, I'm gonna get these photographed, get them up on Grailed. I'm gonna put a link below to, to the Grailed page where you can find all of these. Maybe you're interested in them, I'm not too sure. Guys, honestly, I've taken really good care of all these. They're all in like really tip top condition. Otherwise I wouldn't be selling them on. So yeah, if you're interested, then you can go and check that out. While you're on your way down to checking out the link, if you are, you're gonna be passing the like button, you're gonna be passing the subscribe button. If you've enjoyed this video, if you're into men's or if you're into denim, that's all I do is talk about that kind of stuff on this channel. So if you're into that, then just maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you've liked this video, it'd be great if you give us one of those thumbs up. That does really, really help out the channel and it's very, very much appreciated. Just shows me that I'm, I'm doing something right. So that's, that's great. And yeah, then as always, I say I can feel it over my shoulder. Like I can feel that there's another, there's a lot of stuff to do just, just, just there. Like, yeah, there's, that's, I'm probably not gonna do a video on that. It would be like an epic three and a half hour, three-parter Lord of the Rings length thing. I, I won't force you to go through that, unless you want me to do. If you want me to go through that other rail, then just let me know in the comments below. You're gonna be seeing a lot of that stuff floating up on, on Grailed as well. Right, okay, so I'm not gonna even tackle that tonight. What I will say though, is that, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves, hope you're taking care of each other, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.